What's up, graphic designers? In every episode, I always give you the gift of knowledge. Now, in today's episode, I'm going to be giving you the gift of designing gift cards. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Graphic Design Layout Bootcamp, where in every episode, I take a fictitious logo that I designed in my previous YouTube series and I put it on some kind of a graphic design layout. And the whole purpose of this is so you can learn tools in every episode that you can put in your arsenal and use towards your next graphic design project. Now, if we go back to episode number 18 of Logo Design Bootcamp, I designed a logo for a fictitious sushi slash hibachi company called Rave. And it was a really cool logo. And what I decided to do was simplify the logo, make it a lot more modern along the same line. So it had a little bit of a facelift and now design uh, a gift card holder and a gift card uh, with this logo, with this branding and show you guys, like I said, lots of tools and new ways of doing things. You're gonna learn a ton in this video about setting up images correctly and how to set up your canvas correctly using artboards and saving correctly for a printer. And the best part about this entire series is in each video, you can click on this link right here and you'll be able to download the files that I'm using to follow along if you're a beginner. And the only thing that the file will not include are the actual images that I purchased, the stock photos. So are you ready to learn? Let's get into it. All right, so on the screen right now, you're going to see the flat versions of the outside and the inside of this gift card holder with the actual gift card in it. Now, in this tutorial, you're going to learn just a lot of things and, and get a lot of questions answered because a lot of times when you, you see something that it, this is really like a four panel piece, plus this gift card is another panel. So, you know, you want probably wondering how many different files do I have to set up for this? Uh, the answer to that is one, and I'm going to show you with multiple artboards how we're going to get this going. So if we come over here on the outside, basically, uh, like I said, I have taken this logo from my old logo design bootcamp series and I really modernized it. I simplified it and I made it so this flame can really represent the company. And so this is going to be the back of the card. It's going to be folding somewhere around here. It's going to be uh, the fold is going to be off a little bit so you can see this pop through the bottom right over here. I'm going to show you how to now take that flame and put it throughout the piece. Uh, which would be right here. It's going to fade to basically nothing uh, along with this cool gradient that comes around these photos over here and, and fades into the black. It's just a nice, soft, professional looking feel. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to take three images and how to set them up correctly uh, for this layout and how to make it so these three rectangles going across, span across, are going to become clipping masks, but they're all going to be the same width and height. Um, coming to the inside, the inside is something that you'd want to set up on an uncoated stock because what's going to happen is people are going to write on it with a pen. You don't want it to smudge. Now, this is basically an effect that I have used here. I'm going to show you how to do to really um, knock this area out and pop it out because it really starts to look like uh, more professional when you start to do that as opposed to nice big yellow inside, which isn't bad either. Um, I also did the same thing with the flame. I had it to keep the continuity, pulled it into the middle of the piece and the inside of the piece. Um, but if you really notice, the outside and the inside are totally different. One is very dark and one is very bright, but the card then pulls them back in because it's very dark again. It's the contrast factor. So coming down to the card itself, it's very simple. I literally just took the logo over here, but I'm going to show you in Photoshop how to do the image correctly where it's you're making a mask around there was all different types of stuff in the background all the sushi pieces so i took those out and basically that's it so let's jump into building this layout okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to go online and you want to purchase four different stock photos now that's what i did for this layout you can actually use as many as you want or you can go on a search engine find images just for the purpose of this tutorial to utilize so what you want to now do is when you download these images you want to take them and I'm taking all four and I'm literally just gonna drag them right into Photoshop Four, okay let me just 
shut that one. All right, so we got one, two, three, and four. And if you notice when we come up here, they are all RGB, which is for screen viewing, and it's not for print resolution. So what you need to do is on all of these, and we're going to go through one, and then we're going to apply the same thing to each one. So we're going to go up to image mode, and we're going to change that to CMYK color. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to image, image size, and we're going. it's going to basically tell us that this image is around 20 megs, 19.9 megs. Right now, the resolution is 300, which is what we want because that's the minimum for print. But it's basically saying it's going to look the best possible it could be at 9.333 inches by 6.223 in height. Now, guess what? If you look at that layout that we're doing for this tiny gift card holder, you only need this image to really look good at about an inch and a half in width. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, uh, let's go down just say to two, just to be safe. So it's a two by one. Uh, you know what, let's make that 2.5. And as long as you have constrained proportions, this will change as, it, as you change the width. So it basically went down from 19 megs to under two megabytes, which is what you want. And it's still 300 resolution. We're now gonna hit, okay. We're gonna do that to all four images. Image size, again, 300 resolution. We'll do that to 2.5. And there we go, image mode, CMYK color, image size, 2.5. Because you don't want files that are going to be enormous, and even when you save them as PDFs, they're still going to be enormous. And and you know you want to be able to send your printer a PDF in an email. You don't want it to be enormous where you have to now FTP it or get it to them on a, on, a, on jump drive or a CD or whatever you want to do. This is the right way to do it. So now we're now going to save all these. I'm just going to hit Command S. I'm actually just going to overwrite them. So hit OK. And I'm going to hit Command S and hit OK. All right, so now let's jump into Adobe Illustrator. All right, so now we're looking at the finished product. And the finished product size is going to be 4 inches in width by 5 inches in height. But this does not fold completely in half. It does fold down, so it's not folding at 2 and a half. And I'm going to show you how to set this up properly with artboards and guides to uh, successfully build this. Now, what you want to do is you want to go to File, New. And you want to make sure you're just doing one artboard for right now. You want to make the size, again, you want to make it four by five inches. The units has to be at inches. The orientation will then automatically, it should default to portrait. Uh, don't worry about the bleed at this point. Um, we'll come back to that later. Uh, mode, color mode is CMYK. Uh, raster effects is going to be 300 pixels per inch, but that's all in advance. Most of the time it looks like this, and you can now hit OK. All right, so now you have your one artboard, and I'm actually going to, well, I'll pull, I'll, I'll pull my actual artwork in in a second. But what you want to do here is you want to make a second artboard. And yes, I could have done that when I was in File New, and you could have hit two artboards, but I like to show you different ways of doing things. Um, we're going to hit new artboard in the artboard section right over here. And it's going to make an, an additional artboard that is the same size as this one right here, which is pretty easy right there. Now, what I want to tell you is that the starting with the outside, the top panel is going to be larger than the bottom panel. So I'm going to give you the exact dimensions to use because that part that's going to stick out on the bottom is going to be a quarter of an inch. Now, let me explain this. Um, what you want to come up and do here is you want to come to the rectangle tool. You want to click. What you're going to do is you're going to type in four inches in width by, and you can hit tab to get to the height, by 2.625. And we're now going to hit OK. Now, 2.625 is going to be the larger of the actual panels. So if I go to option click and I shift this down, so I copy that down, you're going to notice it goes right off the edge. So this panel is obviously shorter. What you now want to do is you want to zoom in here. And this is basically a way to get guides in the specific spot because 
Right now we're going to hit Command R on our keyboard and you're going to notice that the rules pop up on the left and the top. And some people might be thinking, well, why don't I just take the ruler and grab it like normally and look down the left hand column. Okay. Oh, it lines up at two. You see how I have a two right there. Now I have a two and an eighth. Now I have it at two and a quarter. But here's the problem. When you get an odd size, like a 2.625, I don't even know what that is. Then you're going to have a problem finding that in here. So what you're going to do is you're going to basically, like I said, you're going to make that box and that box is saying where the fold is going to end up. You're going to now take your ruler, you're going to click, hold down, and you're going to put it smack dab right in the middle of that. Okay. You can also go up into window and info. And when you put your mouse over over this line right here, you're going to notice that oh, here we go right there. You're going to notice that it says 2.625 roughly right there. So you know you're in the right spot. Now, I'm going to take this same rectangle and I'm going to now pull it down here. Okay? And basically, if you notice, this guide is going through both of my artboards. So you could do a couple of things. You could either do another line and just remember that this second line up here is where the fold is going to be for the inside. Or you can literally take your artboard by going to Document Setup, Edit Artboards, and you can just move it away so your guides won't run over each other. And if I'm confusing you right now, I'm going to uh, solve the confusion right here now. I'm going to zoom in right here and I'm going to take the ruler. And I'm going to put it smack dab in the middle of that. So if I zoom out now, these guides are not running into each other on the artboard. So you basically know here's the outside. Here's where it's going to fold. Here's the inside. Here's where it's going to fold. So now that I just took 10 minutes to explain that, I hope that you understand what I was trying to do there because it could be a little confusing. Some people might say, you know what, that is confusing because you didn't do the thing right in the middle and screwing everything up. And that's why I moved the artboard right there. And you know what? Plus, now you know how to move artboards and, and pull down guides. So again, this is the outside and this is the inside. I am now going to make one more artboard. I'm going to hit new artboard and it's going to come down. It's going to come parallel to this one right over here. Now I'm going to make this artboard the size of the gift card and to double check my size of my gift card is going to be two and an eighth by three and a quarter. So what you're now going to do is you're going to go to document setup. You're going to hit edit artboards. And as you can see, you can click on each artboard you want to change. I'm going to make my width 3.25. I'm going to make my height 2.125, 2 and an eighth, and I'm now going to hit OK. Uh, if that guide going through it is bothering you, you can again hit Document Setup, Edit Artboards, and now you can move your artboard right away so nothing is in the way of it. So now we have our three artboards to start with. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to copy everything that I had done in here and I am going to pull it into my new document just so I can have a side by side because like I always say these layouts aren't you know if this video is 40 minutes the layout you know it took me two hours to do something like that because there's a lot of experimentation other versions that I went through that I didn't like and, and so forth so what the first thing you want to do here very simply is we're going to take a rectangle and we are going to click and we're going to hit four by five. All right. The size of our entire piece. We're going to move that and we're going to t flip these around right here. And I'm going to turn off my white stroke by clicking this and hitting the none. H hitting the none. That sounds hilarious. Um, hitting the none in the stroke area. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool anyway so the rave logo is something that I am going to provide to you so you're going to be able to utilize that same element um, but what I want to do first is I want to um, actually I want to pull my three images in um, and first I want to take the rectangle and I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to make one let's see how high I want to make this all right I'm going to shift that over I'm going to make one rectangle and I'm going to fill it with white 
and I'm going to go to option click and I'm going to hold shift while I do this and I'm going to make a little space between these right here all right once more option click shift okay and I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick right after this tool we do here but what we're going to do is we're going to click one hold shift and hold shift with all three of these and now we're going to come up into the align tools and horizontally distribute them to the center point and that's going to make sure they're totally spaced apart perfectly now the trick that I want to show you is very simply how to make these three boxes the same width going across now that you have these three boxes say I click off and now you click back on shift hold shift while you click all three you're literally just gonna grab this point right here and go all the way to the edge and now you have three boxes that are the same exact size spanning your entire piece how cool is that the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file uh, you let's go to file place let's do that for now and we're gonna go to our desktop and we're gonna go the we're gonna do let's see which ones did I do one all right so one the image is one three and four okay now there's something very alarming here there's something I did not do with that first image because as you can tell it came in and the other two are very small like I save them and this one's enormous so it's image number one and we're gonna jump back in here maybe I didn't save it correctly we're gonna pull that back into Photoshop and I guess I did not say that so we're gonna go back to image mode CMYK color image image size 2.5 all right, and now we're gonna hit Command S, JPEG. We're gonna overwrite it, and I'm gonna jump back into Illustrator. And let's see if it was in here. All right, we're now going to go to File Place again, and do that image number one. There we go. Okay, so what we're now gonna do is we're going to take this image and we're going to go to object arrange send to back learn the keyboard command shortcut which is shift uh, shift command open bracket so you, we're gonna throw that to the back and we're gonna place it over the right over here we're gonna throw that to the back and actually no, let me place these images in the correct order I wanted them to be so this is here that one's gonna go to the right this other one's gonna go in the middle. Now, if you're wondering why I just pull these to the right, uh, to the to the back, you have to, when doing a clipping mask, you're gonna clip everything into that white box. You need to have the image that's going inside the clipping mask to be the most, the lowest, the lowest object, meaning that it's gotta be behind everything. So what you're now gonna do is you're gonna click this rectangle, you're gonna hold shift, and you're gonna click this sushi right there, and you're gonna right click, and hit make clipping mask or go to object clipping mask make or command seven so we're now going to do the same thing with these two command seven one more hold shift when you're selecting both of these and hit seven again okay so now if you notice the compositions aren't very good in here it's not really showing enough for the product and not making you you know want to go and and uh and get this food so what you want to now do is you want to change the contents of the clipping mask and you're going to do that by hitting a on your keyboard you're going to click on the image and you're going to hit e on your keyboard now to transform it and you're now going to hold shift as you're scaling this down you can even hold option it'll scale down from the center point and now you're going to get some nice looks in there again click the image with hit a on your keyboard direct selection click the image hit e on your keyboard to transform and now we're going to go to hit shift and option and we're going to scale this down a little bit a little bit too scaled all right again a on our keyboard e to transform scale this baby down get those chopsticks in there break it up a little bit okay so now we're gonna work on this this quick little effect in the background we're gonna take a rectangle and we're just gonna make it about that high a little bit under the fold actually no yeah go towards the fold right there and we're gonna make sure it stops short of the the images you don't want it to hug right up against it and you'll see why in a second and now you're basically gonna make a gradient of black to gray and let's see normally we'll have a gradient of black to white so what I would do here is I would make the gray uh, the black about 38 the Y about 50 mid 50s magenta in the 50s 
Got a little bit more cyan. So let's see what happens there. All right, cool. Pretty close. Lighten that a little bit. See what happens. All right, so that's our little gray background right there. It looks pretty good. If we delete this, it's plain. Put it back in. Now it's a nice little... Um, add some add some something in the background right there all right now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to lock all this by hitting command 2 i'm going to lock this and then i'm going to lock that and i'm going to lock that <laughs> and now i'm going to go to command g you're going to have all these files so you can mess around and see how i did everything so right now i have my logo i'm literally just going to go to option click and i'm going to shift it right over here and I am going to now go to object arrange bring to front because I can see it but I can't see it because it's hidden behind everything else now um, what I, I felt like this needed to be uh, lightened as opposed to um, being a full you know white I didn't really like that I felt it, it was better as 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 lighter so I actually took that and I made it 60% opaque right there um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, since this is part of a whole group, what you want to do is you want to hit A on your keyboard and you want to click the flame. Because if you don't hit A and you have your regular arrow, you're going to click it, like I said, it's part of a group, and you're going to click the whole thing. So again, click off. Now click A with the uh, hidden A on the keyboard for the direct selection. Click the flame. Hit, hit Command C to copy, and now hit Command V. So literally you just pasted it on its own now. So if I come back to my regular selection and I move it it's on its own it's not grouped with anything which is important uh, what you want to do is you want to now scale this up because we're going to have that in the background we're now going to change it to white and we're going to let me just make sure what I did over here okay cool we're going to take this and we're going to make the opacity 20 percent we now need to set this flame in a clipping mask so it does not go over the image over here. And we're going to simply do that by coming to our rectangle tool, making a rectangle that goes all the way to the edge, hitting A on our keyboard, and now clicking that flame, right-clicking, and hit making clipping mask. So now, if you zoom in, you're not going to see that go under there anymore. Watch. We're going to, we're going to back up. It was there. Now we're going to go forward again. We're going to redo, and now you're going to see that it has disappeared. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're literally just going to take the text box, we're going to click and we're going to, in all caps, a gift for you, and hit escape to end that selection and we're going to fill it with white. Let's see if I spelt everything right. Yes, I did. All right, I'm going to change it to the font, my avant garde font, avant garde. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Command C and Command V. And we're going to paste this. And we're literally just going to come in here, the reflect tool or O on the keyboard. We're going to click. We're going to hold shift. And now we're going to move straight down. And it's going to flip it all the way around. We're now going to hit E on our keyboard. And we're going to basically scale this thing up, just like we did with the images before in the clipping mask. And now it's upside down. And since there's nothing on the back, I don't need to. If, if there was all types of text on the back, I would do it right side up and then flip it back, uh, just like in my logo design, just like in my layout design bootcamp episode number one, where I did the direct mail piece like that. Um, so now we're going to jump on to the inside. What we're going to do here is we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to make a four by five. And we're going to make a simple gradient that goes from yellow to gold. And that is going to basically be the inside. I'm going to take my gradient. I'm actually going to make it go from left to right like that instead of uh, vertically. And somewhere, um, let's see real quick. All right, so we know that the fold is going to be where this guide is. So above it is where you want all the other information. And below it is obviously where you want the card. Now, um, what we're going to do here is we're literally just going to make a rectangle. And we're going to make it about this tall and let's see for right now let's make it go to the fold and see what happens and we're gonna fill it with white okay and the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to come into here and we are going to make another rectangle and the rectangle is gonna be from light gray to white 
And what that's going to do is it's going to make that little effect that pulls you back into the form. And so we're going to come into our swatches and we're going to take a light gray, like a, say, a 20%. We're going to put it here and we're going to take a, a, a white and we're going to put it there. And we're going to change our gradient going from top to bottom. All right, we're going to click that just like so. And another way you can get away with this at this point is you can close the box a little bit. The gradient will shrink. We're now going to go hit Option, click Shift and shift it down. We're gonna to come to the reflect tool or O again. We're gonna click, hold shift, and pull it down by moving your mouse straight down and it'll flip it around. And I just wanna see something real quick. I know I'm jumping ahead, I'm just thinking. Okay, we're gonna be fine. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, pull this flame back in. We're gonna go copy, paste. We're going to hit E on our keyboard we can flip it around also by going uh, like this and you can even hit hold shift while doing it uh, I believe let's see I filled that with that was gray so let's do it like a gray and what kind of an opacity that I use there I did 20% so now we're gonna do 20% opacity we're gonna hit E on our keyboard and we're gonna transform this baby up we're gonna scale it up and it's actually backwards if you notice as, as mine is up there, so we're gonna fix that. All right, uh, notice some differences right now on the uh, one in my finished product, I don't have the drop shadow show. So in the appearance palette, while I have this selected, I'm going to turn it off. And I do have the stroke on, so we're gonna turn the stroke back on. Cool, all right, so that is basically gonna be our background. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the text boxes, we're gonna click here no we're not going to click there because if we click there actually we're going to click in that box so what you want to do is you want to hit um a on your keyboard a v excuse me you want to select all this stuff and go to command 2 or object lock selection so basically i just locked all that stuff so i can't click it accidentally we're now going to hit the text box and we're going to make a text box and we're going to hit type in 2 colon from and amount and we're now we're going to hit escape what we're going to do is we're going to hit actually make this a little bit larger and we're going to hold shift while we're scaling this up and i'm now going to come into my character and i'm going to come on into the letting and i'm just going to increase this a little bit so it fills the space gives people enough room to write things uh, next thing we're going to do is come to our line segment tool and we're going to click right after here just eye it up and we're going to click we're now going to hold down shift and we're going to come right to the end we're going to come up into our stroke and hit the default stroke and it's going to put a black one point stroke on there or it should be one point yep okay next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to option click and we're going to shift it down move that over a little bit and then again option click shift it down we're going to move that over a little bit too Okay, cool. Uh, the very last thing we're going to do is, and this is just a text box, I'm going to go to option click and I'm going to shift this down. But again, we're going to bring that to the front. But what I want to show you is if you're not sure if it's completely centered, since you're already working on this artboard, all you have to do is come up to here and put the reference point right in the middle and make your X half of what the width is, which is two. So we're going to put two in there and we're going to just click off and we're going to see it bounce right to the middle of that hole text box just went right to the middle now if I come in here and I make another rectangle of 0.25 by 0.25 so it's a, a quarter inch square rectangle I'm just gonna move it up here for now I'm gonna pull a guide this is how you do quick guides you do a quick guide right there and I'm gonna delete that and now I know that this is the part that's gonna be sticking out when the piece is actually folded down and closed so you can see the address and the phone number on the bottom sticking out right under here so that's pretty cool um, you can visually also do it by literally just pulling it over and go to object arrange send to back so now you can see what's really gonna look like when it's closed it looks really nice so what is next what is next uh, the next thing then the last thing is going to be this gift card uh, what we're gonna do is we are going to come into here 
and we're going to make a black box. Let's make sure that's the size of our artboard. Cool. All right, we're going to pull our logo. Oh, we're going to fix the bottom. Hit A on your keyboard to do that. We're going to come over here. We're going to pull that full logo over. We're going to go Option click and we're going to shift it over. We're going to go to Object Arrange Bring to Front. And as you can see, this thing is definitely way too scaled up. So we're going to scale it down just a little bit. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to jump back into our desktop. Actually, we're going to jump back into Photoshop because I left the photo in there. It's going to be the photo of these sushi rolls. And you're going to notice there's all types of stuff in the background. But on my final piece, all that stuff in the background is taken out nice and neat. You can't, you didn't even notice it was there. So we're going to come back into Photoshop and we are going to take our image and we're going to double click the background and we're going to hit OK. So we, it makes it a layer that we can now edit. We're going to come up here into our pen tool and we are now going to make a nice clipping mask. So we're going to start here and we're going to come over. And we're going to start going around this sushi roll right here. Very free form because it's going to be so small on the card. If you screw up any little details, it's not going to be a big deal. So I'm doing a lot of clicks here because I'm trying to get it, you know, to kind of contour the edge a little bit. But there's no way you're going to get it perfect. Pixels will drive you crazy if you try to follow all of them because they fade and they mix into each other and this drive you nuts. All right, just about done here. Now go to the edge now. We're gonna go to the bottom. We're gonna go all the way to the right, hold shift while you do that. And then we're gonna get to the back. You're gonna see a little circle when you hover over it. That means that when you click, it's going to complete it perfectly. We're now going to come over here into our paths tool and we're going to hit the Geez, what am I doing? Hold on. Let's scale that up. We're going to hit the third one in, and that's going to make an actual work path for us. We're now going to come back to our layers, and we're going to come down here to Clipping Mask. Add a layer mask. We're going to click that, and it's going to take everything that was outside of that, and it's basically going to make it disappear for the moment. It's actually making it's hiding it. We're now going to come up here to Save As, and we're going to save that as, I named it as 2. PSD. I'm just going to put that on my desktop. Save it as a PSD so you have all the layers you can edit later on if you need to take or, or bring back parts of that background. And we're now going to go to File, Place. And we're going to come into 2.psd and we're going to place that right in here. You're going to notice it comes in there nice and neat. And I'm now going to, um, I'm going to take this, I'm going to go to Command C, and I'm going to go to Command F. I basically just pasted another one of those black boxes on top of itself because I need to clip this image in there. And I'm now going to hold shift. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit make clipping mask. Now let's take that clipping mask and actually resize it in this area. We're going to hit A on our keyboard, click the image, and we're going to hit E on our keyboard to transform now. And we're going to scale it up to get it to where we want it to be. Remember, always allow some extra for bleed because that's going to have to bleed because this card goes to the edge. And let's see, did I get everything I wanted to on that card? Nope. All right. Let's scale that up a little bit more. Pull that up. Okay. Oop, I got mail. All right, so... The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this entire thing and we're going to now go to Command G. We're going to group this entire thing. And this is just for superimposing uh, purposes. We're going to come into a rounded rectangle. We're going to click. And we're now going to the width or the height is the same. And the corner radius is going to be an eighth, 0.125. And we're basically going to clip that in. Right click and make clipping masks. So now if I move this over, we have our gift card like so. All right. And you're going to have little tick marks that 
you know, the uh, the person who does the letter pressing or whatever is going to, you know, cut those little business card slits out of there for that to fit in there. Oh, excuse me, not business card, gift card, because it's a different size. And let me see if I missed anything on this layout. Nope, the layout is good. Okay, so here are the three finished pieces on our canvas. In the beginning, when we were setting up this new document, I mentioned about the bleed. We would come back to this later. We're going to get to that now. What you want to do is you want to come to document setup and you want to come up to the bleed area and you're just going to hit this up arrow once. It's going to add an eighth of an inch all around to the top, bottom, left, and right. And we're going to hit OK. And now you're now going to see, if I go and pull my guides up, you're going to see the red mark which is going to be the area where the bleed needs to extend to so let's jump into here really quick what we're now going to do is we're going to hit a on our keyboard and we're going to just kind of hover over here and actually what we're going to do excuse me we're going to come we're going to make a nice marquee because we got to select all the points um and we're going to now hit the right arrow about 10 times two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay and I'm now going to I actually got to let's see I got to fix this. We're going to hit E on our keyboard. We're going to fix our image in here because we had to extend that image to the edge. All right, we're going to do the same thing over here to the bottom. We're going to A on our keyboard. We're going to select all these points. And excuse me, what we're going to do? Let's make this easy. We're going to click here. We're going to hit Shift. We're going to click all three images, and we're now going to go to Object Lock Selection. Right, now we're just going to select the points. We're going to hit A again on our keyboard. And now we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I guess it's just 9. And we're going to do this one first. Okay. We're going to now lock it, Command 2, because then we're going to select the individual points accidentally. And we're going to select everything in here. And we're just going to go. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're extending that so when it cuts in um, the bleed, everything goes to the edge correctly. Same thing right here. Okay, cool. Now we're on to the inside. We're gonna go one. You could just do that. You could eye it up. We're gonna go two. We're gonna pull it to the side. And this is all using the white arrow, direct selection or A on your keyboard. This is easy, the inside. Then I'm going to show you how to save this. Now with this, now with this, you're going to set, you're going to save this with the bleed and you're going to send it off to your printer and then they are going to do the die cut uh, around the corners. So the corners are rounded. So you don't have to worry about setting that up in the document. They don't want you to set that up actually. All right, again, now we're going to click this image. We're going to hit Command-2 to lock it. So we can now extend this background. I'm just going to move this. One, two. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Object, Unlock All to make sure everything's unlocked. We're going to hit Command-A on our keyboard and then go to Shift-Command-O create outlines or you can actually go up to type create outlines which is no longer highlighted so because I did it already and we're now going to go to command uh, we go to option command s or file save as and we're going to save a copy to our desktop I'm going to call it gift card as a PDF make sure all is selected for the all, all three artboards uh, I'm going to make this high quality print I'm going to go to marks and bleeds. I'm going to select just trim marks. I'm going to click this little arrow up right here, hit save PDF. And let's go to our desktop and see what we got. All right, so we got page number one, the crop marks and bleeds. Page number two, the inside. And page number three, which is the actual card that is going to go in there. So. That is how you successfully do the Rave Sushi Restaurant gift card holder and gift card. All right, guys, so thanks for checking out another episode of the Graphic Design Layout Bootcamp. I hope you learned something. 
Let me know in the comments below what you learned in this video. Definitely very important so I know. Uh, share it out on your social networks. And here are a couple of the videos from the series so far. We have about seven or eight videos left. So uh, every video you go through, there's always something to learn and a lot of stuff that I repeat over and over because it's just practice makes perfect. Um, take the challenge, take the challenge and send these files to me. The files, meaning that take the ones I gave you, change them around a little bit, do some kind of unique design, send them to me and eventually I'm gonna pump them all out of my social network so everybody can see what, how other artists do things. And uh, that's really it. So I will see you next time for the next episode of the graphic design layout bootcamp. Have a great night. Peace.